Welcome back to Shooting Gallery New England, everybody. We appreciate you swinging by. Make sure, don't you forget, to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Today, we got another amazing how-to video on how to work a double-action revolver. Now, with all these new... Um, with all these new... firearms owners out there... I'm gonna cut that out. With all these new firearms owners out there, I want to make sure that at least some some of you have the opportunity to learn how to work some of these guns. Now, you might not be buying this specific one. This is a Smith & Wesson Model 65-3. Now, I'm going to go on later on, the not probably in this video, when I have a dedicated video on this handgun, on what the dashes mean in the Smith & Wesson lineup. But for some of you that have probably bought a used revolver, double action, single action revolver, you're gonna wanna know how to use them. They all typically work the same way. Some of them might have a exposed hammer like this one does right here. And some of them might have a concealed hammer geared towards concealed carry. It still has an internal hammer, so it's not like a hammerless revolver. But let's get down and figure out how to work a double action revolver. All right, everybody, so let's get into how to safely work a uh, double action, almost a single action, double action revolver. So when you're gonna obviously handle a double action revolver, you wanna make sure that the cylinder, which is what you put your cartridges in, it's technically considered the magazine of a double action revolver. Today, again, like most of these how-to videos with this type of series, we are gonna be using snap caps. These are 38 special snap caps. This is a 357 revolver. So when you have a 357 revolver, you are able to use 38 special ammunition. It's kind of a lighter load, so this frame is built to take on heavier projectiles. So we're not using 357 snap caps because again, they're just a lot, they're larger and this is all I have. So with these old Smith & Wessons, there's a few things you want to first be aware of. First of all, when you're holding a double action revolver, always make sure that the cylinder is open. The best way on Smiths to open the cylinder is just a simple button right here, usually on the left hand side if you're a right hand dominant shooter. Um, again, always consider your three main safety rules of make sure the fire act as if the firearm's always loaded, point the firearm in a safe direction, and don't point the gun at something you don't intend to destroy. So, like I said, the cylinder release is just this little button that you just push forward and you're able to pull the cylinder out of the firearm. Now, on some others, Depending on what you get, I know Ruger's, it's like a legit button. If you're, if you were able to pick up an old Colt, like a Colt detective model, that has a different magazine release where you kind of pull it back. Every revolver is different, so make sure you read the manual on the revolver if you're able to buy new. Or there's various amounts of manuals online if you're buying a used revolver. So, now. One of the first things you want to make sure of when you're handling a revolver is, especially when you're loading it, do not, under any circumstance, hold a revolver like this and just think you can load the cylinder like that, all right? Now, this is a six shot revolver. Now, the best way to do it is put your thumb through the frame and take, use your two, your index and middle finger to move the cylinder. Now, you have full control of the revolver when you do this. So you can just place it like this. You have control of the cylinder. You're not, you're, you have control of the frame so the barrel's pointing in a safe direction. And that is pretty much the best way to handle and load a double axe revolver. Now, when you're going to, this is always a common mistake that the media and movies have made it seem it's so easy to do. Never, under any circumstance, what we call cowboying, where you swing the cylinder, spin the cylinder as fast as you can, and just whack the cylinder into the frame. That is so harmful to the revolver. Yes, it's a, it is considered a tool, but you're putting undue stress on the crane, which is this part of your 
cylinder right here in this. Now, an easy way to do that, I'll show later on the video, but all the simple, simplest way to put the cylinder back into the revolver is you just lightly push it in and you're gonna hear the definitive click that's locked into place. The thing that you wanna consider when you are handling a double action revolver is obviously if you have an exposed hammer, this is an older model Smith, so if you're just getting into guns and you bought a used revolver, a lot of the times, this is why I'm using snap caps too for this main reason, a lot of the times they stop doing this, but on a double action revolver, you have your technically your firing pin is on the actual hammer of the firearm this is what ignites the primer and sends the projectile down the barrel so do not I do not suggest it because you will break a firing pin you'll have to replace a hammer in some cases some of these used smiths these older smiths are actually hand fitted parts guys so you want to be safe and make sure you don't want to break the brand new revolver obviously you want to test fire and stuff like that that's why use of snap caps is so important with old smith and wessons like this or old colts rugers even Tauruses, Rossies, anything with an exposed firing pin on the hammer, snap caps are going to be awesome for it because it's rubber where the primer would be, so it dampens the blow from when the hammer is sent forward after pressing the trigger. So, that's just a quick safety tip, especially if you have an old Smith that has a firing pin with a hammer on the I mean with the firing pin on the hammer. Now a couple key features of a double action revolver. Now obviously this is a cylinder, this is the barrel, this has a fixed front sight and a groove for your rear sight. You have your hammer, the jimping right here that is considered your ha the hammer spur that allows you to grip the hammer and pull it back to get it into single action mode. So just to clarify again, with a double double action, single action revolver, what that means is you can actuate the trigger by pulling the hammer back in a single action mode where you get a lighter trigger pull, or I'm gonna lower this down because I'm gonna hold in the fire in a safe position, and the snap caps in the fire in the revolver. Now double action is you do not the best way to explain it is you do not need to pull the hammer back to fire the weapon. Now, obviously double action, you just pull the trigger, you're going to get a heavier trigger pull with double action, but at the same time, that's considered a safety on a double action revolver. I'll demonstrate that with use of a trigger pull gauge. Now. I do have a video on this. I will link it in the description on alignment electronic trigger pull gauge. Now, what we're gonna do first, we're gonna turn it on. Make sure it's ready. Now, we're gonna demonstrate how light a trigger pull can be. Again, this is a beautifully made Smith & Wesson revolver. So the trigger's gonna be very nice on a double action. So we're gonna pull, make sure. Three pounds, 7.1 ounces. So, this is single action, guys. What the hell? All right, make sure that's ready. We're gonna do this one more time. Ow, 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 ow. Oh. Now that is something you wanna make sure to get your hand out of where the hammer is because you can get hurt yourself like that. It's kind of like slide bite, but with a hammer. It's called hammer bite. We've all done it, so let's redo that. Three pounds, one ounce. So you're gonna get about a three pound trigger pull. I'm not gonna keep doing it. It's just to demonstrate, this is just for demonstration, guys. So this might not accept it on a double action pull. So let's clear this out. Make that here. Make sure my hand is out of the, ha the hammer because I don't want to bite my hammer. So you have a ten, you have ten pounds, two point four ounces.
11 pounds, 12.1 ounces. Nine pounds, 8.1 ounces. So it's kind of all over the place between nine and 11 pounds, depending on how fast or this, this is not the proper way to definitely check a double action revolver. Cause again, you have the human element in it, but you're gonna obviously can tell it's a heavier trigger pull. Obviously when you're handling a revolver, you do have the added benefit of, you don't have to worry about loading a magazine. You just put the, you can put the rounds in. These are very famous for keeping them in, in a nightstand or something like that, in a truck, obviously in a safe, something that's very easy. Uh, for some reason, gun shops decide to recommend revolvers to many women. I wouldn't recommend a 357 Magnum to a uh, woman that is 90 pounds soaking wet. That's how you can get like broken noses and those uh, jack wangs on YouTube that decide to give their 90 pound soaking wet girlfriend a 454 Casul and say, yeah, hon, you can shoot that and they end up breaking their nose. That is what you don't want to do when you're trying to get somebody new into firearms. You want to make sure, okay, if they want a revolver, definitely steer them towards a 38. You know, you, you 38 is still a very powerful round. It's not as heavy recoiling as a 357 or say in, in terms of a handgun like a Glock. It's going to be a little bit snappier depending on the barrel length. This is a three inch barrel. Uh, so if you get like those snub nose revolvers, obviously you're going to get more kick. It all depends on the length of the barrel for the amount of recoil that you're going to have. So with that being said, if someone is recoil shy, keep in mind guys, people like, there's companies like Taurus, there's companies like Rossi, uh, I think, and I know Smith & Wesson, they make a brand new production, I don't know the actual model number to it, but I will add it on the screen once I see it, I'll look it up, I'll, I'll add that, uh, nomination on the screen just so you guys know what it is if you're interested in it but they do make double action revolvers usually with a two and a half to three inch barrel in nine millimeter so that's going to be almost no recoil a heavy frame this is a, a steel frame which i like it's um a again like i said it's a 65-3 uh it's i was i'm not a big wheel gun guy to be quite honest it's it, it, I want, I, you know, I've always wanted a 357. Uh, I didn't, I'm too cheap to buy a 686 Plus, which is like one of the mainstays in Smith & Wesson's revolver lineup. So I, I chose the 65-3 because it's stainless, it's old school, has these old school grips. The trigger, I feel, is much better. I've handled the 686 Plus. I'm gonna have a full review on the six, on the 65-3 coming very soon. Once it opens up, you're gonna have a full review on this particular revolver. So let's get back into a couple parts you're just gonna need to know. This is just a basic overlay of how to work a double action revolver for you new shooters out there that are interested in firearms and you want to get into a revolver but you're not really into concealed carry but you want a firearm for the house this is actually very useful now there are some drawbacks to revolvers now it's not like a semi-automatic if you want to quickly obviously training is going to come into play with a lot of stuff like this so if you want to say learn how to quickly reload You'd have to obviously train with the firearm you have. And then, you know, there's things called uh, moon clips. I don't have any here to demonstrate, but moon clips are essentially you can, it's how you can carry a spare magazine. Dep they have them made for all different cylinder sizes. So if you have like a, a six, a five, six, seven, or even eight shot revolver, you can get moon clips or speed loaders, and there's a bunch of different types out there where you can hold extra rounds. So there's the downside of capacity, but there are ways to counteract that. Now, my biggest issue with a revolver is if something fails on a revolver, typically it's not like you can pull the slide back, drop the mag, and keep make it safe. If your cylinder locks up, you cannot fire the gun, you, you, you can't, pull the hammer back can't pull the trigger you have a dead gun so essentially you're holding i'm gonna guess i don't know the exact weight on these i'm not really into the specs that much guys but 
The exact weight of this would probably be, I'm gonna guess around three pounds. So you have a three pound paperweight that you can throw at a uh, criminal that is interested in trying to kill you. So yeah, you could, if you are managing to throw a three pound paperweight at the guy's head, yeah, you can knock him out. You can definitely knock him out with that, but that's a very, I don't recommend doing that. That's my biggest drawback to revolvers. That's why I'm not a big revolver guy. I only have like two. Um, so, that's one of the big drawbacks. Now, they are also very, can be very accurate because you have a fixed barrel to the frame. So it's not like you have a rotating or browning style action where your barrel is gonna be lifting up to help eject around. So you're gonna get a more accurate firearm in some cases, obviously add the human factor into it. And also, depending on the size, Smith & Wessons, Colts, Rugers, there's all different types of revolvers out there made of all different materials. This just happens to be stainless steel. Um, so it's a very heavy revolver. That's gonna help dampen the recoil. So Smith & Wesson makes titanium, scandium frame revolvers. So they're actually lighter revolvers. But with the lighter revolvers, you're going to experience more recoil. So one drawback is knowing the material that you're revolver is made out of. So think of it like this. If you're picking it up and it feels really light, just think when you're gonna bring that home and shoot it for the first time and always go, I always tell everybody, before you load it up with self-defense loads, get some target loads, at least figure out how the recoil, always remember uh, self-defense loads are gonna have a little bit more kick. So if you get a very light revolver, even with some target loads, it's gonna kick. So if someone is recoil shot, just keep that in mind. Those are just kind of some things I always tell people to look out for with revolvers. Um, this is, uh, I looked up the serial number. It was made around the late 70s, early 80s. So this is a very old revolver, stainless steel. I, I personally like this style. It's very, it shoots like a dream with 357s and 38s. Um, now another thing for comfortability, which is the last thing I'm gonna touch on, is if you have, say like, I've talked about this before, Look at these behemoth size Shrek hands. A little pea shooter <laughs> or like a little snubby is not gonna fit my hand. It's gonna be uncomfortable for me to shoot. There is ways to hold a revolver. So with these old school wooden grips, this is a consider, I think they consider this a, L, a K frame revolver. I'm pretty, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is considered a K frame. So it's like an upper middle big level revolver in the Smith & Wesson lineup. Hickok 45 has a great video explaining the designations of sizes on Smith & Wesson revolvers. I'll throw that into the description just if you guys are interested. So if you're like, what the hell is a J frame, a K frame, an N frame, an L frame? There's so many different nomenclatures for Smith & Wesson revolvers. So obviously, same as a semi-automatic, you're gonna take it, wrap it around, and now, what you wanna make sure of is making sure that your finger doesn't go past the cylinder. With this, the reason why is when you fire this off, the where all that uh, igni ignition is gonna be from the round, it's coming right here. So you don't want to, in many cases, have your finger be blown off because that's where all that gas is gonna be released. So I always tell people, keep it right in front, and then when you're going to hold it, same thing as uh, you know, you're crossing your rear thumbs, making sure you're staying away, cross your rear thumbs like that, or this, what's considered T-cupping, which if anyone gives you crap at a range for T-cupping revolver, get away from them, you don't need that negativity in your life. If you can shoot a revolver accurately, and this is why it's considered T-cupping, because you hold it like this and wrap your bottom hands around it. It's not the proper way to shoot a revolver, but many instructors teach new shooters how to do it just so they get the mechanics down, and later on with training, you're able to, I always shoot my revolver like this, but sometimes when I'm training people like my wife, who's kind of recoil shy and not really, you know, heavy guns can bother her, I tell her, okay, Place your support hand underneath this. Let's uh, should widen this up so I can show you. So I say, take your support hand, put it underneath your shooting hand, and you can aim it like that. You have full range of the trigger, 
at the same time, you're able to keep your finger behind the cylinder. You're able to actuate the, tr the, tr the hammer. And if you have to, you can press the cylinder release and swap it out. So again, make sure if someone's telling you not to teacup, just remember, you're a new shooter. You're just learning the simple mechanics. And then with training, you can learn to hold the revolver a certain way. So that is some of the basics I'd like to just instill. Now, ammunition, there's going to be a whole different bullet weights so again this is a 357 so if you're having a 38 special realize there's so many different bullet weights bullet sizes loadings do your research i will down the road upload a video on kind of the starting weights of certain ammunition so if you're trying to get into like a 9 a 38 because in the end of the day guys Knowledge is king with so many new firearms owners out there. There's so much need for informational videos like this to where a new shooter who say is kind of gun shy, but they want to learn where they don't need to have some boogaloo commando telling them they need a 45 and they need a 450 Bushmaster AR-15 to be effective. It's someone can sit at the at their kitchen table, watch videos like this, and learn. And that's what these are for. They're for learning. They're for teaching. It's a obviously. If you're watching this video, you've probably watched a few videos on double action, single action revolvers, and you're trying to get a general feel for it. So later on, we will be filming a video on bullet design and bullet or ammunition types just so you know like what you're trying to do depending if you want like a home defense load you want some target loads what's the difference between a in case of like a nine millimeter i don't know the the specs on on hand of a revolver because i don't shoot them that much but say for you got a nine millimeter which i do have a video on how to work a semi-automatic i'll link that in the description below so you can decide if you want a 115 grain, 124 grain, what's a hollow point, what's a practice load. That's a video that will come down the line. So we're going to get back up top. We appreciate you guys swinging by today. Uh, we hope you learned a lot about double action revolvers. I will have a video coming out soon on this particular one. If you ever find it in a shop and you think you want to pick it up, I highly recommend it. So thank you for swinging by, guys. Let's get back up top and close this video out, okay? So everybody, I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of tr quasi training video on how to work a double action revolver. Most people buy revolvers because hey, they think it's very easy, you just kind of load it, point and shoot. But obviously, you can, as you can tell from the video, there's a little bit more finesse to it, a little bit more safety features that some people might not be aware of. And for so many new gun owners out in the country, we, all of us are trying to make sure that you all have the best information possible for you. So again, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell in the right-hand corner. And don't forget, we do have a 250 subscriber giveaway that we'd love for you all to get there for. So check that video out. It's going to link in the description. Have a good one, everybody. Thank you for swinging by.